where these uh, provisions were made. So he has an ability, and the problem with Mr. Linton is that he knows that he, he doesn't know that he doesn't know, and therefore he does not seek advice from anybody who may know um, something mm -hmm. and who, who may be able to intelligently and objectively advise him on these matters. So he relies on people who do not know, and he relies on himself, um, who is ignorant of the processes. Darrell, let me say to the people of Dominica, up front, before I go into explaining the various facets mm -hmm. of the Citizenship by Investment Program, that this allegation of a $1 billion missing is untrue, this is a blatant lie, and this is not the case in the Commonwealth of Dominica. This government has had a sterling record um, of being able to account to the people of Dominica um, its funds, and we can show and we can point to you how we have how we have spent our resources. Yes. And this is why when the European Union, this is why the only World Bank, the IMF, the uh the C D B when these countries come to the Odomica to do their independent audit of how we have spent their funds, they have always given us a, 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 a an excellent A grade um in the manner in which we use our money. As a matter of fact I will go on to say mm -hmm. that in the Caribbean Dominica is a model is a model where all of these international financial institutions are concerned and also um, countries are concerned. So we have been able to do so. Mm -hmm. um, in the estimates, in the, in the revenue, and which, is pro, um, pro, which is a projection, um, we only include government revenues. Here's something, we don't include the revenues that the port will generate. We don't include revenues that the DBS radio will generate. Yes. We do not include the revenues that the um, Duasco will generate because while these are wholly owned by the state, mm -hmm. they are governed by specific legislation. And they, are, they have given the authority to account to the taxpayers of this country um, by way of, of, of financial statements, which are all laid on the table mm -hmm. at the end of, the, of their financial year so that they can be scrutinized by the public of how these public institutions are managing their, their, their affairs on behalf of the people of Dominica. So in, in respect to the Citizenship by Investment Program, you only report government's revenue where the Citizenship by Investment Program is concerned. And I want to say to the people of Dominica mm -hmm. that the CBI pro program is in Dominica is regulated by SRO number 37 of 2014. And there were there were subsequent related amendments, um, and so the the regulations are, and the regulations are made. I mean, in 2017, some amendments were made, and the regulations are made under Section 20 of the Commonwealth Dominica Citizenship Act, Chapter 1, 10 of of of, of 1990, Revised Laws of Dominica, right? And the program, uh, listeners, mm -hmm. as we've said numerous times. Um, there are different facets to it. So you have one, the direct monetary investment, that is the cash option, and then you have the real estate. And later on, I will speak to the housing um, program aspect of it. Yeah. So in respect to the government direct monetary investment, and we we have uh, an account called the Economic Development Fund. So. All revenue, so the persons choose to invest either in the real estate or a direct government con um, direct government monetary fund, or they will, could invest in the housing program. Now, the funds, the, the 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 investments in the direct monetary cash option, all of these funds come to government. Okay. So that is what government um, present and account to the parliament mm -hmm. because these are government control funds and from the real estate you also receive some um, payments that also go into that particular fund is that so what, would, what would go into the consolidated that, fund? that goes into mm -hmm. the consolidated fund mm -hmm. and in every of those um, type of investments you have special accounts mm -hmm. but those special, special accounts the funds really remain in the consolidated fund but you have this for accounting purposes for greater transparency purposes. So monies from the European Union is in a special fund. Monies, grants money, grant money we receive from governments and institutions go into a special fund. 
the World Bank funds will be in a special fund so that you are better able to account mm -hmm. to account for these funds and track how you utilize those funds and uh, those, those funds going forward. So, just to give you, um, Daryl, an, an understanding, so I, I, in the Economic Diversification Fund, which is a direct monetary investment, uh, applicants render a non-refundable financial contribution to obtain citizenship. And I want to make the point, Daryl, mm -hmm. that we don't give to agents or developers a, a box or suitcase of blank or blank passports. We don't sell passports under the Citizenship Investment Program. What we do is that we utilize our citizenship, mm -hmm. our citizenship, as a tool to attract foreign direct investment and non-tax revenues into the country. Because I will say to Dominicans that there are many citizens, many people, sorry, who apply under the CBI program, who never bothered to apply for a passport. Because wow. for them. They are more interested in investing in a hotel that is branded internationally or locally. A success story, for example, like Jungle Bay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, and people who, who, who want to come for a holiday don't know, okay, when I go to I go a holiday, then I am spending money in an investment that I've got to retail on from. So, there are people who have applied for Dominican citizenship who have not gone on to apply for a the passport. passport. Mm -hmm. Because when you become a citizen, we don't just hand over to you a, a passport. You have to go through the same process of applying for the passport like I do, like any one of us doing this in Dominica. Yeah. So you have to fill out the forms, mm -hmm. they have to be signed, they have to be recommended, and you submit the form with your uh, naturalization certificate um, and the, the, all, the, all the documents required by the, by the, by the immigration department to, to, to get your passport. So we're not, we, we don't give people passports to, to sell. And Mr. Linton is deliberate in his language mm -hmm. um, because selling passports has a, a particular negative connotation to it. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, you will have a negative in, uh, understanding of it. So selling passports. So we have been selling passports. Um, we, we, we use citizenship, like other like countries in the Caribbean, as a tool to attract foreign direct investment. Because we all have to understand mm -hmm that foreign direct investment in the world, including the United States, there are certain risks that investors will not want to take. So you, you cushion the investor's risk by giving them that, 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 that tool, that, that mechanism to attract investments. And I will say to Dominicans too, that in the regulations, mm -hmm. it only makes provisions for um, investments in hotels. You could also have an agricultural investment project. So an investment in agriculture, if you have a project to invest in agriculture, you can be facilitated under the Citizenship by Investment Program. If you have, if you were to build a factory, Dominicans have been speaking about a juicing plant and, and a number of other manufacturing enterprises, you can submit a proposal to the government. If it meets the requirements, you, you will get pro um, um, approval to um, use the Citizenship by Investment Program to, in, to, to create that investment in our country. So, and the regulations make provision for that, yeah. um, and it's very clear and, and, and so forth. So, so we have this. So, in respect to the, the, um, the Economic Diversification Fund, you have $100,000 for a single main applicant. So if one person is applying, that person pays $100,000 into the local account. Then you have U.S. $175,000 for a main applicant, and a spouse, so that's for two people. You have US 200,000 for a main applicant and up to three qualifying dependents, okay? And then you have US $25,000 for any uh, qualifying dependent of the main applicant other than a spouse, okay? okay? So that, 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 that's the family thing. In, in addition to, um, to these funds, the applicant pays certain fees. And so the applicant pays US 7500 for processing fees and due diligence background checks on the main applicant. Right? A US $4,000 for processing fees and due diligence background check on each applicant who is above the age of 16. Mm -hmm. Okay? If considered appropriate, um, an enhanced due diligence report may be required. 
right? And the, the, the regulations also make provisions for children. If so, if you become a citizen and down the road you have a child, um, that child would become would would would, be, would apply for citizenship and would pay U.S. two thousand yes. dollars. Okay, so you have that. Now, the due diligence fees don't come. They don't. They they they. These are fees that you pay to the agents agencies which conduct the due diligence on behalf of the government of Dominica. Okay, so those fees in large measure go to the um, due diligence agents because for us due diligence background checks. Mm -hmm. is paramount yes the check the, the due diligence is paramount that's the backbone mm -hmm. that's the basis of our, our program and this is where we've always been able to stand the test of scrutiny and um, by the international community because because we have engaged reputed international agencies people who are working for mi5 mi6 people working for the canadian mountain police people working for the fbi people working for the cia Mm -hmm. People working for the various internal, internal um, it, um, intelligence agencies of the United States and globally. Okay, I mean we have a firm now that is conducting due diligence for us with former um, Commissioner of Police in the Kingdom and, 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 and National Security Advisors in the Kingdom. So and these people do comprehensive background checks. And in the event that we think that we need an enhance, and of course we have we have the JRCC um, that is um, also doing due diligence for us. So we have different layers. So we have our own. Um, internal uh, capacity to do those things, checks. Then we have the JRCC doing the background checks for us. And also we have the, our contracted firms, international firms, based in Canada, based in the United States, based in the United Kingdom, all three developed countries with robust um, 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 security systems. You know, and all of these people are highly reputed, experienced individuals working within those agencies to conduct the due diligence for us. Now we accept, like everything else, um, there's no 100% foolproof system. Because in the United States, for example, in the United Kingdom, there are people who, one or two people who may go through, who may have a challenge. So you always have those, those, um, those um, situations. So it's, it's, it's not a perfect system, but certainly it's a, it's a system that, that, that matches that which you find um, in, in developed countries. And so, you, you have this, and then you have now the the real estate the real estate um, component to it. Yes. Okay. The real estate component to it, and in the real estate component, and I hear people talk about, you know, oh, um, um, how, how um, does the government own the hotel and so on? Again, mm -hmm. I want to reference the United States because every one of us in this world, when we speak, we like to reference the United States. So let's reference the United States. The United States, again, I repeat, has an EV5 program. Yes. And it targets communities that are undeveloped, underdeveloped, with a high risk of poverty, high risk of unemployment, and very little, if any, um, investments, both from local investors or um, foreign investors. So you have a project in the United States to say, for example, hotel development, they give you X number of of um, residency allocations mm -hmm. for this for, for this so X number of applicants to this to this program, and you are now allowed to build a hotel, but the government doesn't own the hotel. The local government, as the state government or the federal government, in the United States, do not do, does not own the hotel. Mm -hmm. The hotel is owned by the investors. Yeah. Likewise, in Dominica, we simply use this. As a, as, a, as, a, as a mechanism, a tool to bring foreign direct investment. But guess what? Mm -hmm. The hotel is built in Dominica. Yes. It is not built in Dubai or it is not built in the United States. It is built in Dominica. What, has, what does this hotel do for Dominica? Mm -hmm. In the construction phase, it created and it continues to create hundreds of construction jobs to Dominicans. Yes. Hundreds of construction jobs to Dominicans. It creates employment, permanent employment, direct employment during the operational phase, as we see with Jungle Bay, with just 40 rooms, he has 62 employees. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just 40 rooms open so far, he has 62 employees. These are 62 people who are breadwinners in their family who, had it not been for the CBI program, Sam Raphael may not have the, had the capacity to build a hotel of that magnitude. Yes, mm -hmm. he may have the capacity to build a hotel, and I'll speak to that later down. 
and so forth. So 62 employees. Um, and he expects to increase this to 150 or so when he, he goes to, I believe, 85 rooms by, by December of this year. And one can also appreciate the indirect jobs for the fishermen who will be selling fish to Jungle Bay. Thousands of pounds each year. The farmers, the, the, con the, 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 the confectionaries that will be selling to Jungle Bay. Mm -hmm. the, the, the tours that will be sold to the guests who will be coming to Dominica, the, the visitors. The, the, I, I live, Isaac, we talk about the other benefit because Isaac is a businessman, I'm also a village politician. <laughs> These guys are, 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 are business people. But I'm passing to Isaac to speak about the, 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 the benefits of an investment like that into our country. Yes. Um, you see, the Prime Minister is on the ball, he's on the rule there this morning. There. Um, I wanted to just comment on one thing first, though. Um, the Prime Minister spoke about what the <coughs> opposition leader said in Parliament. And in Parliament, I tried my best to bring to the attention of his team and to the public how we need to be responsible when we are doing things. This morning, the Prime Minister explained all the different layers and the different components of the CBI program. First of all, I would like to say that every Dominican should realize that any revenue source that we have, we need to protect it. Whether you're in opposition, whether you're in the government side, whether you're just a normal citizen going about your business. I think it is destructive and ill-advised for anyone to be attacking our revenue source. When I was in the opposition, I used to be speaking to the leader of the opposition. And I used to indicate to him that when you're going to make statements, you have to be sure that you are 99% close to the truth or accuracy in regards to the statement he made pretending that he just suggesting something if he was let's say in the public open domain he could be sued and had a serious fundamental problem with those issues of litigation and here again he proved to be a person who is not doing any research to ensure that what he's saying it's factual, or at least showing that he has done everything to find out or uncover what the truth is. And for that, I was very, very disappointed. Let me go into the CBI program. A very good friend of mine uh, who studied in the U.S., uh, studied in grammar school, a top student of the grammar school, and also sixth form college, and went on to do finance and economics in the U.S., worked with several multinationals in the U.S. He did an analysis in regards to the hotels and in the CBI program and its impact on the hotel and the general economy. Based on his analysis, he just focused on just five five-star hotels if they were to be open within the next year or so. And the general impact is over $250 million dollars. And, and, and not short-term or one-time impact, the continuous impact on the economy. So the CBI is really the lifeblood of the economy right now as we speak. And I like the approach that the Minister of Finance is taking, where he's using it as a pivot or the full for development, where he's using it to invest in productive sector areas that in the long term will be well diversified. But I don't want us to lose sight that as the investment is happening, you are one, the short-term jobs, as he said, in construction and all the related linkage um, um, industries. So, for example, right now in construction, you have in the, the, the retail sector, a lot of things are being sold, you know, and also the jobs that the man on the ground is getting. So we need to not lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. The other area is in regards to all the other um, 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 backward and forward linkages, for example, in tourism, after those hotels are established, Dominica's economy will be completely be different because you have several jobs in regards to tours, um, in regards to people involved in services to supply those hotels. In agriculture, for example, just if you look at just the fishing subsector, You'll have a significant amount of money to be able to so that the fishermen, whether from up north or 
down in the central region, let's say down Rosu or even down Sufri, the Dominica is a small island. Mm -hmm. So you have that opportunity across the board where you have Red Snapper, you have um, Tuna, Mai Mai, etc. So that's a big, big opportunity for, for fishermen in Dominica. Um, agro processing, although we, do, we, we don't have a big, a large agro processing industry, like for example, Jamaica or the US or, or, or so many other countries. What you will see there is those small businesses, and I think we need to focus on niche manufacturing and agro-processing. So all those small things like, for example, people have confectionaries, like let's say we're making some local juice. That day, there's an opportunity there to move into further value-added um, um, products there. So again, that's opportunity. Um, you would see what has happened through the construction um, sector. You see a lot of young people have actually harnessed and sharpened their skills in terms of broccoli and stonework and all that. These are, again, opportunities that they have received, practical things, not just guess, practical things that they can actually use now to help to build other hotels or to help build homes, etc., and also the ability to be exporting their services within CARICOM region. So I think we, we need to see the practical aspect of the CDI. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing is, and I'll just comment just on that one. In economics, we have something called money supply. And really, in common terms, I remember in the Bush time, um, they always used to talk about um, the man on the ground and the money trickling down. Mm -hmm. So in economics, money supply can have two, two issues there. So a country can make money, and let's say, for example, the country is involved in financial services. And a lot of money on the books will be reflected that it, is, it will show that we have a lot of money in the economy. And sometimes, no, it doesn't really reach the man on the ground. What I like about the CBI program yes. is because of how it is in regards to one construction, in regards to housing, and um, some other, the other things involved, for example, some of our infrastructure projects, the money is actually trickling down to the man on the ground. So on a Friday afternoon, you can see a man who is involved in the job is actually getting his money and he's going home with it. And when, when we did the economic analysis, when we look at it and, and track the research on it, you see that in like 1999, Dominica, in terms of money supply, was about half a million dollars, a billion dollars. Right now, it is two billion dollars. Yes. So we have to understand the significant impact of that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just wanted to do comment. You know, and, 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 and I mean, Isaac made a point about the money trickling down to people. And uh, I mean, let's take for Jungle Bay for example. Yes. I mean, all of the works done at Jungle Bay were done by local people. Stone workers from Galleon, Sufre, and elsewhere. Yeah. You had the project man project um, supervisor there from, from Dailies, the gentleman from Dailies. You had um, Severin McKenzie yeah, the architect. Uh, as the architect on site. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, any money, hook that job. So, 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 so <laughs> and, 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 and each of these people have employees. Yes. 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 Who depend on, the, on these funds to get paid at the end of the fortnight or only the month. Mm -hmm. On the housing project, you had Tony, Ast Tony, um, uh, Tony Libra. 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 Yes. Of yes. 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 Who, who received substantial contracts. Millions of contracts. You had Chris Walter as well. And you had several local people in the area. I know Chuck Driver there, who's my wife's cousin and son, you know, who has been working with them with, with, the, with the Chinese from the, from the time they started. And he's, he's, he's there full time. Yeah. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So you have a number of, of people who are benefiting directly from this. The, the selling of, of, of ground provision, the selling of vegetables. The selling of fish, the selling of ch local chicken mm -hmm. to to to, the, to these people there. So so the the the, the, the trickle long impact on this mm -hmm. is, is significant. We have a gentleman who was in the diaspora, um, who came down from St. Thomas, and who set up a steel a a a, um, a, 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 a steel work um, um, project mm -hmm. investment yeah. where he would he would he would um he would he would uh, um, build the, 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 the stirrups and so. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, and, and he got contracts from his um, from his hotels, mm -hmm. and he, he's employing people. A young guy, yeah. younger than me. Mm -hmm. um, you have um, Diane Douglas, who has the operations in Bourne, the, the, the landscaping yeah. landscaping yeah. project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He he got a full contract. Um, I introduced him to to Range, and and he got a contract from Range to supply the over thirty five thousand plants, wow. which will be established at Range. Mm -hmm. 
and he, and so now he has expanded dramatically, and he would get the other smaller contracts for the other hotels. You see some days. So, 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 and then he is employing a significant number of people, including um, some ladies from my own constituency. Mm -hmm. You, you, you see something. A number of guys, about fourteen or twenty guys from the Carnegie Territory, wow. employed. You know, planting these flowers, taking care of them, etc., etc. So, so, and, and these fourteen jobs from the Carnegie Territory came as a result of this of of this um Kempinski Hotel. Yes. You, you see, so so the investment the investment there is is, is, is is significant. So it was it was very really malicious mm -hmm. and intentionally malicious of Mr. Linton to have gone to this gazette and, 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 <laughs> names. Names and yeah. added added the names from different gazettes and then multiplied it by, by by a number. But yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? Um and and, and and so in respect to the real estate Daryl, as I said, the investor is required to make a minimum investment of two hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Okay? And the the government does not get the two hundred thousand dollars then. That 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 money goes into the investment. And I must say to people, yeah. Um all of these investors, whether it is um I I holdings which is Jungle Bay, mm -hmm. whether it is Range, mm -hmm. whether it is um um Tranquility Beach, Mr Edwards, whether it is um um Anichi, uh, Mr Lawrence and, and, and company um um look we have um secret bay yeah and also we have um the rainforest uh, resort all of these people all of these investors all of these developers mm. front loaded the investments meaning they took their own money or they took money borrowed from the banks yeah to start the project mm. because investors no matter how the richer somebody is the more discerning he is where his money is concerned. Yeah. So yeah. things that you and I will do with the welcome money that we have, um, a man who has, who has money, I remember going to a guy's home in the United States, a very rich fellow. He yeah. must be, be worth about $600 million. And so we there in a guy's kitchen and so on, and I see a whole stack of um, coupons. <laughs> coupons. Yeah. Shopping coupons. <laughs> and then the guy sent, sent his, help, his, his help for to, to do some shopping. With the and, coupons. And, and so he gave some cash and coupons. I said, my friend, I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I, have, I, have, I have 25 cents and dollar all over the house. So I, I start collecting the 25 cents and dollar. I have a cash tin. Yeah. And, and, and then I go to the credit and deposit it and, and so sometimes. You know, yeah. Um, because the guy has coupons. Uh -huh. So these people, as a matter of fact, um, Larry, Several of his, of, his, of his potential investors do come to Dominica, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. They come to, to let their eyes boil the peas, yeah. so to speak. They want to see whether that is true, whether, whether you want, what, what, what you show me online, whether what you show me in your presentations. Yes. It's actually happening. And this is why you will not get people starting to invest in a project unless and until they actually see its commencement. So I'll give you a classic example, and I'm sure he, he, he doesn't mind I use him. That's um, um, Mr. Edwards, a Dominican investor residing in Anguilla, who is doing mm -hmm. the 70-room resort Hilton by Curio in, in, in Salisbury. So, and I think I, I, I would believe that Mr. Hector John would have been, would have been glad for his people that this, ho this hotel is built in this constituency. Yeah. Because I could have said, no, I don't know what it is in Salisbury. Mm -hmm. I could have said that. Yeah. Because the ultimate decision is mine to make. But Salisbury is part of Dominica. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it lends itself to tremendous potential. Yeah. So we approved it and so forth. Um, but he was having difficulty in selling. Mm -hmm. And I believe that he has one of the best um, developments in the region. Yes. The, the yes. concept mm -hmm. is one of the best. Because he brought together a lot of his personal experiences in hotel development and mm -hmm. real estate development. Mm -hmm. But he was not getting sale, much sales because, because he hadn't started. Ah. So... He recognized that. So when he started, he saw a, a dramatic increase in interest and investments into his project. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? And he has more smiles now than he had a year ago. You see what I'm saying? He's, 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 you know, he's, so, and likewise, Jungle, um, Jungle Bay. Sam Raphael took a substantial loan mm -hmm. from a financial institution to start his project. So he, he did not wait for the CBA funds to, to build up. He started it. Ali Clarence, for example, mm -hmm. invested several millions of dollars. You understand? Because to develop the plans, yeah. to do all the EIS studies, mm -hmm. all of the engineering studies, all the geotechnical um, surveys, all of these things cost money and significant sums. Yeah. All of this they had to, to put in and let it down and get it. The housing, for example, in mm -hmm. Belvoir-Chopin. This gentleman came to Dominica 
We're not getting one dollar from the government, but on behalf of the government, the mm -hmm. 44 plus acres of land with his own funds. In Bellevue. Be in Bellevue Chopin. Mm -hmm. He put in the infrastructure. He started, he did all the geotechnical studies because Bellevue Chopin is a place where the water logs and you have to do a lot of studies there yes, to yes. understand the soil type. This is why mm -hmm. we had to relocate some families in, in, in a part of, of Bellevue Chopin. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this gentleman got his first payment from the government a whole year after he had started. You understand? So, in respect to the real estate, Daryl, mm -hmm. you have different categories. So, the minimum investment is $200,000. Yes. All right? The minimum investment is $200,000. So, in respect to a single applicant, that person pays $200,000 um, does the development share. Mm -hmm. And the government share of this investment, of this is government fees will be $25,000, right? Plus the due, due diligence of 7500 and that amount almost in full goes to the due diligence agency mm -hmm. and the certificate of naturalization fee of $250 that's US, US dollars I'm quoting there and processing fees of $1,000 okay male applicant and spouse with three minor children you have the development share of $200,000 and then you have the government fees of $35,000 due diligence fees of $7,500 plus $4,000 um, dollars for the for the for the for the for the for the, for the um, additional person, and C O N fees are one thousand two hundred fifty dollars, and processing fees are one thousand. Mm -hmm. Main applicant and spouse with five adult children, two hundred thousand dollars. Government fees seventy thousand dollars. Due diligence fees seven thousand five hundred dollars plus twenty four thousand dollars for the additional people. C O N fees one thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, and processing fees one thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And <clears throat> I, I hear, for example, we say, "Oh, this is this is too cheap." But we, you are in a marketplace with 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 serious competition, competition coming from all sorts of jurisdictions that have better infrastructure than us, that have um, better prospects for investments than us. Yes, yeah. developed countries, so-called first world countries, and therefore you have to position yourself mm -hmm. to be able to take a, to 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 get a share of it. And one of the things that you will see, Daryl, why you will see, for example, is a reduction in revenue over the years for government. Mm -hmm. It is not that the, 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 the program is doing worse off this year than the previous years. Yes. It is because you have more projects. Ah. You understand? <laughs> you have more projects, more real estate projects. So obviously, there will be people who would prefer invest and see a return on investment. Mm -hmm. And there are some who would prefer to um, just contribute to government fees because they would rather the government get the money to do some of the government public sector investment program. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, and then you have the housing project. The housing program now is is the, the premier program because it, 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 it invokes a certain consciousness on the, on, on the part of investors to know that they're helping somebody in Dominica mm -hmm. with their investment to be in a home. And you know, recognizing the, the impact of Tropical Storm Erica mm -hmm. and recognizing the impact of Hurricane on Dominica. There are people who prefer to invest in the housing program. So, if we do not have the housing program, yes. and if we only had um, the range and the Marriott, mm -hmm. you would see a dramatic number in terms of revenue for the government. Because all of the, because now the housing revolution, the housing program is doing better mm -hmm. than the fund option. Mm -hmm. And when you tie that now, add this now to the real estate, these are funds that are spent in Dominica because the infrastructure is in Dominica. Yeah. The investments are made in Dominica outside of the marketing fees and the other fees that you have to pay to the um, marketing firm and to the developer. Yeah. So these monies are invested in the, in the hotel. Now, to build a 161-room, five-star hotel resort, the money. I mean, you know, <laughs> and, 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 yes. and, and those, of, those of you who are involved in, in construction and real estate, if you were to put a, a dollar value to what is happening at Belleville Chopin, yeah. Yeah. I mean, 360 or so residences, mm -hmm. if you multiply by average of $350,000 per residence, mm -hmm. That's not even that's not even including the infrastructure, mm -hmm. the basketball courts, the marketplace, the the plaza, yeah. the community center, the road. ex roads, etc., yeah. etc. Et the the construction of the water, water tanks, mm -hmm. you know, um, paying Dominic, paying flow, 
paying Digicel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can understand the cost of that investment. Now, if we do not have this project, mm -hmm. and we had this agent selling for Dominica, all of this money would have been part of revenue. That would have been going into the consolidated in, fund. In, in the consolidated fund. Yeah. But what you have with the real estate and the housing is concerned, you have an escrow account. Okay, good. So, the escrow, the, so when you, as an applicant, you apply to become a citizen of Dominica, mm -hmm. you are mandated first to pay the, the fees for the due diligence. Because if your due diligence comes back and is not favorable to you, then that's where the application the process ends. End. Yeah. Right, so I'm saying. So when you get the due diligence report back, mm -hmm. and that person will have satisfied our requirements, there's nothing untoward about the person. Then the application process continues. Yes. So a non-refundable fee. So the non-refundable fee. That mm -hmm. process continues. And that fee does not go to government. Before you get your your letter of comfort, mm -hmm. indicating to you that you've been successful and so forth, you now have to deposit into this account mm -hmm. the prescribed fees in law. Okay. Okay. So that money goes into the escrow account. Mm -hmm. And the, the fees, so for example, in, in respect to the single applicant where the real estate is concerned, that person would pay $200,000 plus the prescribed fees. Yeah. So what the government would, would get from, from, from all of, so it's 200000 plus this thing, the, the, the 200000 would stay with the escrow account, escrow, the, with the developer. Yes. And the fees, the shares, that, or the fees that are that are, that are, that are um, to go to government will be transferred to government and that goes into the consolidated fund. Okay, good. And that forms, that now becomes revenue of the state. Mm -hmm. And in respect to these hotels and so forth, in the agreement, it makes provisions for the appointment of an assessor. Okay. Okay? Somebody background in engineering or, or surveying or other competencies mm -hmm. um, of engineering. Mm -hmm. Who gives... Um, certificates of, 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 of satisfaction to say, well, that person will have completed that milestone and therefore a payment will be made from the escrow account. Mm -hmm. But the, the escrow account is not something the developer controls on his own. No. Mm -hmm. There are two signatories to the escrow account. Mm -hmm. There is the, the government signatory and the developer signature. So no one person can take money from the account at any one time. Yeah. And this was done deliberately to avoid a situation we had, for example, with Greystown, for example, mm. or in other jurisdictions where people had projects and they don't want to be seen. And therefore, we wanted to ensure that if anything were to happen during the construction phase, yeah. that the government would have these monies in the ESCO account that it could complete the project. Yes. If the project had to be completed under certain circumstances. Yes. So to ensure that we protected the investor and we protected the reputation of the state, the Congo mm -hmm. Dominica. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the agreement with these developers is, is very, 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 very robust and very particular. So. So it is. So 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 this is what it is. So these monies go into the development, therefore it cannot be part of revenue. <laughs> you see, yeah, it can yeah. be part of revenue. And if you have pro um, in, um, uh, applications in process, mm -hmm. you cannot put that as revenue because it has not been consummated. Okay. okay. The process it has not been cons consummated it does not come to an end, mm -hmm. a successful mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So that is what it is. Now. In respect to the housing, mm -hmm. in respect to the housing, there was a, dis a, a special dispensation. So it is not under the real estate; it is treated somewhat like the fund option. So the fees applicable to the um, to the housing are the fees applicable if you to invest in the government um, direct monetary option. Yes. Okay. And that was that special dispensation was given because we had a calamity in our hand. We had an unprecedented situation in our hand after Erica, where we had both Bell Bishop, I'm sorry, um, Peter Savan and um, Dubik relocated completely. And when you and, and, and I'm not aware of any island in the OEC that had to relocate complete mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. no. This is the first time we were subjected to Dominica. Mm -hmm. And where would Dominica get this money from to build these homes for the people in Peter Savan? And I'll come to Murray after after in a while. Where would you get the money from? Mm -hmm. And a project like that, the public service doesn't have the capacity to implement. True. Mm -hmm. We do not have the human resources required to implement that, that project. Mm -hmm. So we were introduced to this developer 
Um, because they had, they, we, we, we we interested the person, we saw the project, it took us a while to, to agree to it. And I felt, and we felt as a government, that that would be in the interest of the country. Yes. And have we lived to regret it? My answer to you is no, because the people know, who, I just got a, a voice, I got a voice note from a lady whom I have to visit, uh, a senior citizen who, who got a home in, in Belvish Supreme of Philly Savan. She, she sent a voice note, somebody recorded a, recorded a voice note and sent to me thanking myself and the government for this house and how happy she is. Mm -hmm. so she, she, she's blind, um, but she, she, can, she can sense the and feel the comfort of the home. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? And mm -hmm. she's thanking me for this because where would this, where, where would this 80 plus year old lady get, get the money to build a home? Where would this um, police officer who has a mortgage still pay mm -hmm. get the money to build a home? Where would this nurse who is retired he has to be owing on a mortgage, get to build a home. Yeah. Where this poor fisherman or this bay oil um, producer, whose only income is a little bay oil that he will sell from time to time, mm -hmm. get money to build a home. His home washed away, destroyed completely, inaccessible yeah. by Erica. And therefore the government felt that we could use this special dispensation and carve out an unprecedented program because nowhere in the Caribbean, nowhere in the world, mm -hmm. they would they, they, they conceptualize such a mechanism. Only Cyprus now is doing it. Cyprus started a few months ago. Yeah. Doing housing under the CBI program. And now there are governments that are that are, that are keen on doing it. Um, and there are countries that are keen on doing it. And so where the housing is concerned, there is a certain amount of fees that come to the government and the rest go into the into the project itself. Mm -hmm. Because in every one of those in, in the real estate, in the housing, part of the proposal you would include the breakdown of the cost of this investment. So where I am jungle based concerned, there was a detailed budget presented mm -hmm. from conceptualization to opening, likewise in range, likewise for the Marriott, likewise for the other projects, and including the housing. So on Belvish Chopin, we had a, a proposal, how much it's going to cost for this component, that component, and then there's an allocation of citizenship to shares to be able to finance the construction of this. Yeah. And so, so the how the housing is concerned, as opposed to the real estate, mm -hmm. the housing, every one of these houses that we are building under the CBA program belong to the state, 100%. So it's a state asset. So otherwise... If we did not have the housing, mm -hmm. or if we did not go with the housing program in the way that we went, that all of this revenue would go to the state. Yes. Okay. And therefore, it would it would form part of the estimates. Yes. Mm -hmm. On the public sector investment program. Mm -hmm. That's why if you go to the estimates, whether it's the public sector investment program, which is the capital investments or the recurrent uh, expenditure, you will not see um, um, provisions made for any of the hotels. Mm hmm. And you will not see provisions made for any of the, um, the houses. Housing. Had we included this in the in the estimate, mm -hmm. the, the budget would not be one point um, one billion dollars. <laughs> it would be about two billion dollars, two point two billion dollars. Yeah. Because we will now be capturing now all of the revenue, all of the f funds rather that would be generated by the CBI program globally. Yeah. Including housing, including the real estate, including the government fund. But the, in the in the estimates, you only include the revenue that comes to the government in accordance with the regulations. Shouldn't someone aspiring to be in government know that? No, but, but, you see, <laughs> that, but that was my point. So imagine this morning, the Prime Minister spent... So, so, mm -hmm. so when Linton is trying to um, mimic or try to fashion himself uh, uh, like Skerritt, as he always does. <laughs> so, so he used to be planting food. <laughs> he would go and carry some food from somebody to look at cucumber, yeah. and look at uh, eggplant and so forth. My brother, my brother, you have to plant, my brother. That's what you impress people. You plant, and you plant genuinely. They're not going to take photo ops. So Skerritt asked him, Oti Lajala. He come back. <laughs> Oti Lajala would tap your heart. Um, Polidario. Polidario. <laughs> he come back, Oti Lajala. <laughs> Look the money, the hotels, my brother. Yeah, the housing. <laughs> Look the housing. Mm -hmm. In Cassie Bruce, in La Plaine, in the Alicia Fidoni place. Let me take you up there. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Go to, jungle, go to Jungle Bay. Go and eat a meal there. Yes. Um, swallow your vomit. 
swallow your pride and go and have a meal by Jungle Bay, by the pool. These young ladies from Soufri and, and Point Michel and, and Belle Bishop and Peter Savannah who serve us there from La Plaine, mm -hmm. from Roseau. Yeah. You know, go go and visit. I can arrange for you to visit the, the, the Kempinski Hotel. You have never gone there. Go and visit. I can arrange for you to visit. I can arrange for Ali Glarence so from Marriott. I can arrange for Edwards to go and for you to visit those projects. Yeah. I can arrange for you to go and, and you want to know one home in, in Belle Bishop. In, um, in Belle Bishop, there. Walk the rest. So when you're asking carry it in the government for the money. Yeah, yeah, look at money being spent before your very eyes in Dominica. The hotels, the houses, they here, they're not being built in Dubai, they're not being built in, in, in India or in China. They're here in Dominica. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mean, so, if he is suggesting that we include this in the revenue, that's, that's, that's why I made reference to DBS Radio. <laughs> this is yeah. why I made reference to to um to 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 the port the wasco the wasco these are state-owned entities but they have the different mechanism by which these things are reported mm -hmm. so 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 this is what it is my brothers and sisters in america <clears throat> that all of the funds that you generate from the cbi is not treated on the law and agreements mm -hmm. as government revenue it is only what you receive from these that you treat as government revenue and then you report to the parliament and you will see a reduction in the projection and a reduction in the actual um, take in by government in so far as revenues because you have more projects. The, 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 the relative people have a better infrastructure than the government in the marketplace. Yes. You, you, you see what I'm saying? They have offices in China, they have offices in, 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 mm -hmm. in the UAE, they have offices in India, they have offices in, 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 um, in, in many um, Middle East countries in Europe. You see what I'm saying? They have they have good infrastructure. You see something? They 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 on a daily basis. So and obviously somebody who has a hotel will be more inclined to push his hotel than to push the government fund. Which is quite natural. <laughs> and the, the housing program they said, because people you are impacted by a hurricane by a, a, a tropical storm, and people have certain sensibilities towards this the struggles of people. Mm -hmm. You understand? They would move towards the investments in, 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 uh, in housing. But if we did not have the housing, yeah. the millions that we're getting from for, to go towards the housing development across Dominica mm -hmm. would all come to the government revenue. So the government would not be only be reporting this thing, we're reporting an increased number. But we are not, you're not supposed to, 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 to report to the parliament. Um, the amount that are not government revenue because you're dealing with the, the, the budget and the budget estimates deal with governments, central government, mm -hmm. central government's revenues and expenditures. Mm -hmm. It does not include the national, which means state owned entities. Yeah. State owned entities are obligated through a mechanism in law to report to the parliament on their operations. And this is why you would have seen, I laid on the table, the um, Dominica, um, um, Invest Dominica Authority's financial statements. I will lay on the table the Social Security yes. um, financial statements. I will lay on the table the DOA school. Mm -hmm. I will lay on the table, etc., etc., etc. You understand? Mm -hmm. so that's the mechanism by which you account and they account to the parliament and therefore the people of Dominica. But so the government estimates deal with government's revenue and expenditure. It does not include private investments, mm. or even, inve even in inv investments which the government mm -hmm. um, has an interest in. The only thing you would, um, the only thing you, 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 would, you, would, you would deal with mm -hmm. is where you have a dividend. Okay. So we have shares, because the government has shares in the aid bank, sorry, National Bank of Dominica. Mm -hmm. All right, some forty-nine percent. You, we, we will account for say a percentage. Mm -hmm. We will keep a percent. You would, you would, you would project how much you would gain mm -hmm. by by this amount. So when we we have shares in in, in Lime, in Cape and Wireless, so you also include that. So so this what that because this will consider to be government's revenue. So so um. So. This is what it is. And in respect to the to the escrow account, 
their records of how much comes in and how much goes out. You understand? Because you have to keep track of this because the investor has a limited finite number of allocations. You understand? Mm -hmm. Of allocations. And, 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 and therefore, um, you keep records of it. So X amount comes in, Y amount goes out. <coughs> so, so, I mean, so it, it, is, it is really, really manifestly um, dishonest. And, I, and, I, and, and, and it is an attempt by Mr. Linton. It is te an attempt by Mr. Linton. To use his ignorance and his delivery, he's, he's not like Trump. Trump going to make some extraordinary statement to de deflect from what is happening to him personally. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, Mr. Linton and his team did not demonstrate any seriousness about <coughs> governance. They, they demonstrated their emptiness. You understand? There's nothing that Mr. Linton says that any Dominican can take and analyze and say, okay, let's, let's do that. <laughs> The only thing he made reference to that I noted yes. <laughs> was the Three Lakes project. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask you about the that. The Three yeah. Lakes project. <laughs> see, boy, it's, wow, but that was Three Lakes, but that's what's so nice, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I heard this thing, I, I, I took note of it. Because <coughs> I need to I, I step up for, for a few minutes to have an urgent meeting. And then I asked some friends who were involved in development, mm -hmm. who were financiers in the United States and so forth, a group there. To, to, to advise me on this thing, I said, look, this is the free lake thing. We have this lake there, Burry Lake. We have the, the um, Freshwater Lake, and we have the uh, other lake there and so on. How much would that cost? Look at that, we can tear in. Google, um, Google Earth and look at the terrain and so on. See this lake and so on. Mm -hmm. So we did limited, because he only made a, a one-liner to it. There were no details to it and so forth. I mean, that would cost, first of all, it is a non surgical project mm -hmm. because of our terrain and so forth. Secondly, if you were to pursue this, they would call this U.S. $225 million. <laughs> so there's, there's nothing they said. And so his attempt by throwing this malicious thing out there mm -hmm. is to deflect from his inadequacies, his inability to, to, to articulate policies and programs, his total lack of understanding and knowledge on how government operates and how the budget is prepared mm -hmm. and also to deflect people from the wonderful things, the progressive things, the constructive things, the, if the things that will create jobs, expand the economy, grow the economy, you know, create wealth for people that the government presented to deflect from that. Mm -hmm. So that we will not be talking about his inadequacies and we will be talking about the government's um, Successes. Successes. We're talking about this thing. I give the people share on my brother. I am going to move on to mm -hmm. speak about and to promote what we're going to what we're going to do for forty people, and for the people to post questions to us about how do I benefit from this, how do I benefit from that, mm -hmm. and, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Because in so far as this one billion dollars missing is hogwash, it is dangerous, it is misleading, it is it is malicious, and I'm going to tell people, Dominic. Mm -hmm. that the management of the affairs of Dominica has never been about Roosevelt's care. Mm -hmm. I made a sacrifice to come into politics at age 26, 27. I have never regretted one day because I have always been someone who will always be at the service of people. Because my love is for people. You understand? And my, my, my colleagues in school can tell you, when I had $5, we all ate. Mm -hmm. Right, my students at PS to tell you the college tell you that at break time that they were assured that they will get they could get a snack from 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 scary. You understand? So that's that that's how it will be me. So it's not about Roosevelt scary. It's about the future of a country. It's about someone who is seeking to undermine the efforts of the so Mr. Linton would like to destroy Dominica. So that he can have a justification why people should vote him as as as, as the government of Dominica. Mm -hmm. You understand? And and this is his attempt. And so if he goes out there and he says one billion dollars is missing, lies like this get propagated very quickly. Mm -hmm. You understand? Misinformation, especially this advent of social media, 
just propagated very quickly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what would that happen? What would happen? People who invested in these hotels, mm -hmm. people who invested in, in the government fund, people who invested in the housing, who say, ah, look at the leader of the opposition the member parliament. And you, can, you like to call themselves the leader, leader of the parliamentary opposition. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like to say that? Yeah. <laughs> now, in any way in the world, the leader, the, the opposition leader of a parliament uh -huh. is a serious office. Uh -huh. And therefore, people would want to think in, 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 in serious countries that when a leader of opposition speaks, he speaks from a vantage point of facts. Yeah. Honesty. Facts and honesty. And therefore, there's a certain credibility that goes with what the leader of opposition says. And so if investors, and I told you here, that there are investors who, are, who have met to come. I mean, there are people who, who, who are billionaires, multi-millionaires who, who have come to Dominica. We don't go um, put this people on TV and on Facebook that's yeah. people here in Dominica because people are in a private investor capacity. Mm -hmm. There are some high name people who have come, you know, international artists and so who come to Dominica quietly in their private jets. Well, come on their, on their yachts to, to come here to walk the, 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 the property and to see for themselves. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So if these people are hearing this from Dominica, what is going to happen? The potential for what's going to happen? What is going to happen? They're going to pull out their investments. Pull out their investments. Yeah. And those who are interested in investing would forget about investing it. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to do? Because you know one of the gentlemen who was on the CBS program with Lennox Linton mm -hmm. was a, call, a guy called Peter Vincent. Yes. Peter Vincent. And Dominicans can go ahead and, and Google this name, Peter Vincent. Right? Mm -hmm. Peter Vincent now sits on the board of Henry and Partners. Yes. As a security consultant. Mm -hmm. That's the guy who Mr. Linton was, was parading on CBS program. Mm -hmm. Peter Vincent. And you Google, Google Peter, Peter Vincent and you will see him in the come out. He's, he's a board member. Hmm. And we all know Mr. Linton's association with Henry and Partners. Because Henry and Partners has always wanted an exclusive license in Dominica. So, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters in this country of ours. That is not what Roosevelt's carried. I will not be Prime Minister of this country forever. And I don't want to be Prime Minister of this country forever. I have made my contribution, and I continue to make my contribution on whatever station the Lord decides I will do so. So for me, there's never been a board position. I came into politics to serve the people of my constituency. I do not, I do not come into politics to be Prime Minister. And one day I will write a text on who became Prime Minister Dominic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and even when Rosie Douglas was saying publicly that, you know, he's going to be here for five years and he's going to, he's going to pass him for scary and so on, I always used to tell Rosie privately, my brother, stop saying nonsense. Not knowing that Rosie was serious about it because I met many people out of Dominic who told me Rosie told him so. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess, you know, as the Bible says, there's power in the tongue. So I keep to serve. But Mr. Linton's interest in politics is to maim, destroy, and denigrate. This is not about service. This is, not, this is nothing about service because everything the government is doing that benefits the people of Dominica. He has said that he, he has set out himself to destroy it. So the CBI now is the anchor now of some of the major investments of Dominica. This is source, my brother and sisters, my brothers and sisters of Dominica. And what could, what could happen if the world were to build up Mr. Linton? And people, are, we're, not, we're no longer talking about these investments on paper. We don't want to show in videos of it on Facebook mm -hmm. of what, what may come. So these are not theoretical things. These are, these are things that are actually happening. So Jungle Bay 
is not a hotel that will come to Dominica. Mm -hmm. Jungle Bay is open. The first 30 rooms open. Another 55 will be ready for the, for the end of this year. They, you can go by Jungle Bay and have a meal. You can go and sleep on a bed. You can bathe in a nice pool. Mm -hmm. You can walk there and look at the plants. Yes. The Kempinski is not something on a brochure. Mm -hmm. They're actually taking reservations. Booked already. Booked for in October. Mm -hmm. There's one guest that uh, told a book for 14 nights at 2,600 US a night. Wow. For December, for Christmas, for the whole family. Wow. There are nine uh, uh, American firms that have shown an interest in hosting their annual um, staff retreat at the Kempinski. Kempinski has started to employ local Dominicans. A lady who left um, left the port mm -hmm. yeah. and is now working <laughs> at, at Kempinski. There's a lady who came from, from England who was involved in, in, in dry cleaning and so forth. And she's now the the the, 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 the manager for that for that for that for that department. You understand? A local Dominican got the landscaping contract for thirty five thousand plants. You watch know, thirty five thousand plants is and if the floor plants are cheap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a business I want to go into selling selling <laughs> you know, proper selling plants for our plants. I, I just got a message that you said earlier, fourteen people from the Kalinago territory I employed and I got a message from one of the employees <laughs> telling me that so it's thirty five. Thirty five. Thirty five employed with um Diane Diane Douglas. I I was just corrected. Mm -hmm. Because of the contract that I, go, I, I was able to, to, to help him get, I didn't negotiate the details with him. I was introduced him to the people. I said, look, this is a young man there. He came up from the United States, a, a returning. He has a passion for plants. He has the capacity to supply you. And he got a contract to propagate his plants. Mm -hmm. And I got him to give him an, an advance. He gave him an advance so he could invest in, 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 in the stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you, you see what I'm saying? I mean, so... So Mr. Linton knows what he's doing. Knows what he's doing. This is why he has said when he come if he comes into office, God forbid, he would stop this begging mentality. When I said in the parliament, you can only stop begging. Uh, we don't we don't call it people come to me, I don't call them begging. Neither do I call the requesting assistance of the government as begging. But I said you can only stop begging. One, by you stopping people from begging, which you and you have no control over people's actions, and therefore that cannot be done because in life, every one of us, at some point in our lives, and in many times in our lives, will need a help from somebody. We need a help from somebody. <clears throat> every day I need a help from somebody myself. Every day. <laughs> Hey, can you go and buy that for me? Can you get? Can, yeah. can you go make us for me? Can you go and talk to that lady for me? Can you, you know? Do you have this plan? Do you have that plan? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so uh, there's always a need. Yeah. But and then the other way is by if you stop giving. And as prime minister, you will have control over your actions. Yeah. And Mr. Linton has said that. You know, so therefore, the office of the prime minister, the the so-called red clinic, would close. He fails to appreciate the impact of his so-called red clinic on the way of life of our people. That when somebody is at the ICU and needs to be airlifted, my brother, that person doesn't have medical insurance. And that person now has no access now to the leadership to reach out to the leadership of the country. What happens? The child who has to go to common entrance class and who needs the spectacles, glasses, doesn't have the means. That would that would come to an end if Mr. Linton were to be elected Prime Minister of Dominica. That's what they have said. Yeah. On numerous occasions, mm -hmm. including in that last sitting of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So understand this that when the CBI or if the CBI were to be impacted by Mr. Linton's utterances, reckless, deliberate, malicious utterances, you're not impacting me, my brothers and sisters. Because I am not surviving because I'm Prime Minister Dominic. 
I am surviving by the grace of God. Yeah. Position has never that's why nobody can tell you I have introduced myself anywhere in the world as Prime Minister Dominica. You you I call you scary to lie. Mm -hmm. This is scary. I, I never tell people this is Prime Minister scary. If you know, fine. If you don't know, great. As a matter of fact, I like to go places where people don't know me as Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like I don't like security. I don't like attention. I, I, people who know me, I don't like crowds. I I I I I, I am a shy person generally <laughs> speaking. Always been a shy person. You understand? So I I I really know I am not a crowd person. I like to watch crowds, <laughs> but I don't like crowds watching me. <laughs> so understand this. So so my friends, this hogwash about a billion dollars missing is a deliberate attempt by Mr. Linton. Reckless, 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 reckless. You know, it's what I'm saying. And and these escrow accounts, for example, finally mm -hmm. are not managed by the Minister of Finance. I I I am not a signatory to any of government accounts. Well, it's none of them. Mm -hmm. None of them. Not only not for the CBI, not for any other funds that we have in the Treasury. You don't see my signature on the check. The law provides mm -hmm. for certain authorities of the Minister of Finance. Yes. And I exercise those authorities given to me by the Constitution and by the various laws approved by the Parliament of Dominica. So that, that, that's why this, um, Daryl, and I think I will end here on, 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 on the CBI, and, and I think it's important for us to speak about some of the important things in the budget. Indeed, indeed. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a short commercial break and be back right after a word from our sponsors, the folks who make it possible to bring you the hang on a day.